I'm Mikey G, and it's Saturday, September. Tesla quietly held an installer day amid a move to rely more on third-party installers for its energy business. Over the last year, we have been reporting on Tesla making major changes in their strategy for solar and energy storage. Tesla has been operating its own installations, but they've been winding things down and increasing their reliance on third-party installers. Over the last few years, Tesla has been holding events to explore business aspects, such as Battery Day, AI Day, and Investor Day, but now they've got Installer Day, with their first event held in Sydney, Australia. But we're actually told that Tesla also held a similar event for installers earlier this summer in the USA. It looks like Tesla wants to build a big community of certified installers to deploy their products around the world. A Tesla semi-truck traveled over 1,000 miles in a single day in a real-world test for a new independent study. The North American Council for Freight Efficiency has been conducting a study as part of a run-on-less program to test several electric trucks in real-world conditions and release the data in real time. And now the study has their 18-day conclusion, and the second-to-last day the Tesla Semi No. 3 managed to travel a record of 1,076 miles in one day. Now, the council didn't specify the payload for that particular day, but they said that those trucks averaged around 70,000 pounds of load. Now, in an unfortunately embarrassing comparison, not too long ago, the CEO of Nikola Motors, Michael Lochner, was bragging about their own accomplishment of getting 900 miles in their hydrogen fuel cell truck, and he said, quote, I defy anyone to find another zero-emission vehicle truck anywhere that can run up to 900 miles a day. Tesla has broke ground on their site of their planned futuristic diner with a drive-in theater and supercharger stations. This project has actually been in the works for quite a long time. Back in 2018, Elon Musk said that Tesla planned to open a, quote, old-school drive-in roller skates and rock restaurant at one of the new Tesla supercharger locations in Los Angeles. Now, this was another is-he-joking kind of a moment, but the idea actually grew some legs. A few months later, Tesla applied for building permits, and then just last year, Tesla filed with the city for plans of construction. Now, we learned from that filing that it'll be a semi-circular two-story diner with 29 supercharger stalls and two movie theater screens. And now here we are today, and Tesla has secured a building permit and has actually broken ground at the site. Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis vehicles were spotted doing a photo shoot at a Tesla supercharger, leading to speculation about whether the brands may be ready to announce a joint move to Tesla's NACS charging connector. Now, as you know, NACS has been taking over the charging world since Ford's announcement, and the snowball quickly gained momentum, and until now there's only a few EV companies in the U.S. that have not announced the move. Hyundai is one of them, but the new sighting is more than a heavy indicator that they will. A post appeared on Reddit showing a Hyundai Ioniq 5, an Ioniq 6, a Genesis GV60, and a Kia EV9, which is yet to be released. They were all at the charging location with low traffic and an older pylon set. Now, if that wasn't enough, Hyundai's U.S. headquarters is relatively nearby the site. And we reached out to Hyundai and Kia for a comment, and they just gave us a typical dismissing response about customer's experience or something like that. Volkswagen announced on Friday that it will produce a new electric SUV at their main plant in Germany. Meanwhile, an electric version of the iconic Golf will follow on the new SSP platform. Now, Volkswagen didn't say much about the new SUV other than it will occupy the A segment, but during the meeting, Volkswagen revealed that it has decided against building an additional plant in Wolfsburg. Instead, the new vehicle models based on their SSP, or Scalable Systems Platform, That will be made at Volkswagen's main plant. Volkswagen's iconic Golf will lead into the electric era on this platform. The news comes after reports out of Germany claiming that Volkswagen has been cutting production at two of their German plants, and this due to lagging demand. Fisker's stock is trending higher on Friday, despite announcing plans to raise funds by offering $170 million in convertible notes. Now, these convertible notes are due in 2025, securing roughly $150 million in cash for the company. Fisker says that it's raising funds to, quote, accelerate deliveries, expand growth, and expedite the company's vehicle programs. 
Now, Fisker's stock was surprisingly on the rise after the news, and shares of Fisker are still down around 16% over the last 12 months, settling at about $6.40 a share. Now, typically, when a company issues convertible notes, their stock tends to go down as investors fear dilution. The announcement comes after Fisker revealed separate plans to raise funds in July with a convertible note offering of $340 million. Now, Fisker just started deliveries of their Ocean SUV earlier this year, with plans to spread to three additional models. Fisker itself is actually fairly lean, as they are openly outsourcing their manufacturing. With an injection of cash, Fisker undoubtedly hopes to buy more vehicle production to continue on the long path to profitability. Marco's Pizza has announced a new agreement with Magna International to test out a number of pizza delivery methods. One such device was shown at last year's Detroit Auto Show, and a pilot program has actually already started. The cart is a small three-wheeled box that will actually occupy and drive on public roads, this to a customer's home, and then the customer comes out to unlock the compartment. Together, Magna and Marco's Pizza hope to gather insightful data and into the usage of rates and last-mile delivery vehicles, customer acceptance, and overall efficiency. Now, if you ask me, having two wheels in the front and one wheel in the back, this is a surefire way to get tips. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Martin Wood says, Bjorn Nyland is very critical of the lack of stocks on the refreshed Tesla Model 3 and also the Model S and X. The Polestar 2 refresh should appeal to buyers who don't like the Model 3 refresh because of the lack of stocks and the added advantage of more practicality in the Polestar 2 being a hatchback. Yeah, Martin, that seems about right. Tesla, for all of its greatness, can't possibly meet the needs and tastes of all the car buying public, and I think that the removal of the stocks is definitely going to be something that burns for a little while. Not all innovations are adopted by the industry, and certainly not at the same time, and moreover, there are preferences and identities to be considered. At least here in the USA, and from what I'm told, China is similar, people often put a lot of their personal identity into the car that they drive. Since Tesla is the established leader in electric vehicles, as the rest of the world catches up, there will no doubt be a healthy market for people who don't want to fit in with the crowd. Back in the early days, it was the possession of a Tesla that made someone stand apart. But I think we can all foresee a day when Tesla will be considered normal and maybe even boring. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.